Hotel Round Pipel on Airport Road somewhere out here. And we're talking with, first of all, Jessica Strickland, who's the horticulture agent for the Wayne County Cooperative Extension. Hey! Hey, how are you doing? I am doing great, Peachy Keen and all that stuff. Yes. Who's this? Who's this uh, lady here? We're at a Secret Winery in Podquil, and this is uh, Linda Hall. And uh, so we're out at her place today, and it's her busy season because grapes are ready to harvest. So. Oh, so we come boy. check it out. Fantastic. <laughs> a secret garden here in, uh, off Air Airport Road in the Pikeville area. Linda, how you doing? It's been a long time. I'm doing just fine. It's been about four years since we were out here last, I believe. Was it? Been that well, long? I think it's been that long. Okay. Four, three, maybe <laughs> three, three years. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I can't smell anything. What is that? Uh, this is the uh, Carlos Muscadine. Carlos Muscadine. Carlos okay. Muscadine. Hello, and they are... Uh, Beginning to get ripe, we have harvested about 2,700 pounds so far. Whoa, that's over a ton. You've, oh, you've yeah. harvested, well, when does harvest begin? Well, it depends on the weather. And we've so, had some mighty wet weather here lately. Did that have an effect on your grapes? It will. Um, the best thing is not to have a lot of rain right before harvest. Okay. So, um, but they have gotten ripe earlier this year. Normally it's mid-September before we harvest, but this year is uh, a little early. Okay. Do gnats like grapes? <laughs> they like you, I think. <laughs> Apparently they do. We have, we have an abundance of them out here. Uh, all right, now, this is the Carlos vine. Uh -huh. And uh, so it grows uh, muscadines. This is, these are all muscadines. All muscadines. All muscadines. And if I recall correctly, uh, you, you harvest the, the grapes, you process the grapes, you mm -hmm. make the wine we absolutely do every and everything right is all organic we don't use any the only thing we put in our wine is sugar and water we don't use yeast we let the uh, grapes the native yeast that's on the fruit ferment the wine all organic all My organic goodness. and if I'm not mistaken I recall some awards that this lady's won well, uh, you tell me about your recognition ago, yeah, I, tell me about it I haven't entered anything until this year okay. I don't uh, jinx myself no don't I, jinx yourself tell we, me about what happened in the past in the past we uh, got a silver medal at the uh, state fair um, a couple of ribbons mm -hmm. You're so shy. A, you stopped it. <laughs> that's been a while back ago, okay. so I just I quit entering for a right good while okay. and just. Well, good luck with your latest. Thank okay, you. Okay, your thank latest you. entries. Okay, so how long have you been growing? How old are these grapevines? Oh, we planted in 2003. 2003 14 years 14 old. 14 years old. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that these have grown to where they've grown in 14 years. I would have thought it would have taken a lot longer to get this. Well, the first year or two that we had them, I really took the time to prune them correctly mm -hmm. so that we would get the maximum growth. So off, you were thinking long term. Exactly. I mean, it's not like people, you know, you have to, uh, <laughs> you have to uh, kind of baby the grapes yeah. to get them to go where yeah. you want them to go. Yeah, I know people used to try and prune me. But, you know. <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, that's, uh, that's, they look healthy. Oh, are these, yeah, are these, are. these are considered, a, these are healthy grapevines? Well, they're native to here, so that way it's easy to grow them organically. Okay. All right. Well, is there anything here that's, that's native here besides muscadine? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. I don't mean just I'm, what you I'm have. Native I'm native here. Well, okay. <laughs> I was and you, and you look great. <laughs> you look great. Okay. So uh, tell me, uh, walk me through the process. All right, you grow, okay. uh, when, when do these uh, start budding out? Oh gosh, uh, early spring is when you start getting some leaf, okay. uh, usually uh, before um, Easter. And then, and then once the leaves form, you start getting, uh, what, wine flowers? Or, the little flowers. Uh, the little they're, they're flowers. They're very inconspicuous, the flowers okay. are. Right. And hopefully you won't have a, um, a frost after yeah. they start yeah. blooming. That happened last year, so we had a small harvest last year. All right, so then once you have, you start seeing the flowers and all that, and they, everything starts budding out in the spring, mm -hmm. how long does it take to, before you see and actually are able to harvest the grapes? Uh, late summer. Late summer. Late summer. Yeah. This time of year. And then mm -hmm. in September, normally you would start harvesting the grapes. Yeah, normally. Uh, normally, but mm -hmm. we're going to do it early this year. Absolutely. They're, uh, when they get ready, you've got to go, or they'll yeah. fall off. They'll tell you when they're ready. <laughs> exactly. So once you pick the grapes, you 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 you, you pick them. We crush them. Crush them. Like we put them do, into. Do you use a vat? We we have no. We actually have a, a motorized crusher. Who gets to stand inside the vat and? <laughs> Do this. Anybody do that? I, you come and I'll let you do that. I don't think so. I don't think so. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, clean feet afterwards. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I bet, and purple. Afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> afterwards, yeah. So, okay, once you, you process, you put them in the crusher, and, the, the, mm -hmm. and all right, tell me about the crusher. What happens there? What it does is there's some rollers inside the crusher, mm -hmm. and so it just basically pops the grapes open to get the juice flowing. Get the juice flowing. What mm -hmm. happens to the grape skin? It stays, it goes into the uh, fermenter. Oh, okay. We pour the whole thing, skin, seeds, everything goes into the fermenters. See, the yeast is on the outside of the fruit. The sugar's on the inside. Oh. So once you pop that grape open, the juice is flowing, and the yeast can get to the sugar and start the fermentation process. That's amazing. See, we don't make wine. We just take care of it. It makes itself. It makes itself. Yes. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'll be able to show you some actual vats with the grapes in it, if you'd well, like to see that Oh, I'd today. love to see that. We're going to okay. look at that. All right. All right, let's go. But just don't stick your nose in too fast <laughs> because... <laughs> what happens? You'll see. Oh, will I have trouble walking? No. Oh, okay. All you right. might not have any uh, nose hairs left. Oh. But... Oh, well, okay. I won't do that then. All right, we're going to walk in and take a look now at the process. No. All right. the alcohol level in the wine. Mm -hmm. Basically what you do is put a sample of wine in this part. Mm -hmm. The thermometer goes there and then water goes into this part. Water. In water here. in here. That's called the cooling chamber. And you put a little wine here? You put a sample of wine in there. Okay. And then you light this denatured alcohol burner. Okay. So once the wine heats up, the thermometer will rise and when it stops, you'll take a reading on the thermometer and then use this chart to tell you how much alcohol is in the wine. Really? Mm-hmm. So, okay, so I noticed that this is 12 and a half percent, is that about right? Well, you've got a percent and a half leeway. Oh, okay. So it can be as low as 11, 11. or as high as 14, 14 before it goes to another tax class. And that's a standard, right? That's 12 a, and a half, yeah. yeah. Unless you put table wine on your bottle, then it can be as low as seven or as high as 14. Wow, okay. So that's a big difference. So but usually it runs around 91 uh, or ni 90 to 91. Degrees? Uh, yes, All right. the wine. And so then you use this chart to determine the amount of alcohol. Okay, so when it says about 91 degrees here, that's about 12 and a half percent roughly. Mm -hmm. 11, 11 well, to 14. Well, it depends. What you have to do first is put a sample of water in here. And because water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, right? It does. It does. So you have to calibrate this little um, oh, I see. thing here okay. <laughs> to for so, at 100 degrees. But most, if it's stormy outside, the water may not boil, but 99.8. Um, so that's why you need to calibrate that first and then do your wine test. You have, to be, you have to be a scientist as well, don't you? A little bit. A little bit of science. A little bit of science. Some agronomy, some, some I don't yeah. know what that means. 
But, uh, <laughs> okay, a little bit of everything. Um, and you bottle everything right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is the grapes are grown, the grapes are processed, mm -hmm. mashed, if you will. Mashed. Yeah, and you don't get in the vats and stomp them, do no, you? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> don't do that anymore. And then they're processed over time, and mm -hmm. then they're bottled right here. Mm -hmm. and, and the wine is sold right here. Our bottle fillers back here. Once the wine is in the bottle, wait a minute. It goes to here to get the cork. And this is our. This is your corker. My corker. We got a corker here. <laughs> and I do use real corks. So you mean you, some people don't? <laughs> well, those agglomerated or plastic or whatever they are. I don't. Oh yeah. But I use the yeah. real, real. Well, corks. we don't have any agglomeration around here. <laughs> so once the wine is in the bottle, it yeah. goes here. And you just drop a cork in there, and that squeezes it and puts it into the bottle. Son of a gun. Look at that. And then from there, it's label time. Label time. So this is uh, a little jig that my husband made for me to keep the label straight. So you just line it up and get the label on there. And then the last thing is putting the little shrink tops on with the heat gun. And then it's ready to go. You do all that right here? Mm-hmm. And the beauty of this is that it's all done by hand. It's all done with great imagination. <laughs> it's all done scientifically. And it's all done according to law. Yep. Amazing. This is wonderful. <laughs> and it's all done right here in Wayne County, North Carolina. Wow. Linda, this is great. Thank you, Wayne. This is just great. And uh, the, uh, here's an example here, Mary Rose Red. Tell me about this. This is a dry noble. What does, mm -hmm. that, what does that mean, dry noble? It means that um, there's no sugar in it. It's a noble muscadine, and it has fermented down to about um, just a trace of residual sugar. I know exactly what that means. Okay. As long as it's below 1%, mm -hmm. you can call it dry. Oh, okay. I knew that. <clears throat> okay. But I had a lot of fun naming the wines. Mary Rose, I tried to name all the wines either something to do with gardening or secret. So Mary Rose is actually after the herb rosemary. But I switched the words around and called it Mary Rose. I figured if I called it rosemary, people would ask me if I put rosemary in the wine. Sure they would. So that's my little secret there. <laughs> I'm waiting for your lady. Lady. Yeah, lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, lady. Naming one lady. <laughs> We've got a little beagle pup out here. That... <clears throat> She'll be snoring in a oh, minute. Oh, <laughs> she will be snoring in a minute. She'll be sleeping. Uh -huh. Yeah, very good. Well, Linda Hall, this is fantastic. We're here at the Secret Garden in Pikeville, mm -hmm. and I appreciate your time and showing us the process and all your success in uh, in creating the Secret Garden. Well, thank you. All right, very That's good. Oh, and we're on Airport Road in Pikeville, out near. Uh, a stop sign somewhere. Where, <laughs> yeah. where are we close to? Uh, Airport and Mount Calmer Church. Airport and Mount Calmer Church Road is what we're close to here. And there's a sign out in front, right? Mm -hmm. All right, Linda Hall, thank you so much. Thank you.